Today we're reviewing the Great Devourer, the forces that the hive mind can send from the Great Void. Let's talk about the Tyranid army in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where today we're talking Tyranids, an army that's had an interesting power boost recently, and now have a fair few more scary tricks than they did before. In the video, we'll talk over the faction as a whole, then go through some of the strongest rules from their book and the new Octarius supplement, take a very brief trip through every datasheet in the Codex, and a few Forge World ones too, and then finish up with a couple of competitive Tyranid lists. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight into it. So in 9th edition so far, Tyranids haven't really had it all that easy. Not the worst of the worst armies, but certainly more of a struggle to play and win with compared with some of the best. In terms of the best lists, some people had some decent early success with Hordes of Gaunts, and once that Imperial Armor Compendium came out, it actually meant that quite a lot of the Nid's best units were Forge World ones, things like Diamacarons, Hyra Jewels, or even Haridans. Now though, Tyranids have been dialed up significantly, in combination with a few key points drops in Chapter Approved, but far more importantly, the Synaptic Link and Leviathan buffs that they got from Warzone Octarius. That's one of Games Workshop's campaign expansions, and it very much feels like a tide over book until Nids eventually get their codex. With their nastiest builds, they can certainly be one of the stronger armies of 9th edition now, though much of the codex's datasheets do remain a bit underwhelming. From the Tyranid codex and their expanded options, I'd say some of the main strengths of the Nids lie in their powerful stratagems, lots of good ways to deal with lots of damage, and good ways of layering further buffs on those units with things like synaptic links, adaptive physiology, and a couple of decent psychic powers. They've got a few really strong or scary data sheets, in particular the horrible line of sight ignoring firepower of Hiveguard, the Swarm Lord's movement shenanigans, in particular combined with gene stealers you can get crazy threat ranges, and still pretty decent Forge World data sheets that can do some heavy lifting. As I said though, many data sheets from the Codex just really aren't that great stat wise. The Warlord Traits and Relic section from the Core Codex just seem downright bad to me, and perhaps if you do want to run the strongest Tyranid builds, they might be a little bit more monodimensional than some other armies right now as a result. Some units just seem near mandatory. I don't think you'll see very many tournament winning Nid lists that don't include both the Hive Guard and the Swarm Lord. So, first up, let's talk about some of the Core Nid rules, then go through some of the ways that you can augment them further. Synapse to automatically pass morale is pretty handy particularly as I think most Nid lists will generally want a fair few Synapse creatures about. Even if you just want to cover some bases, having some cheap warriors around for objective scoring and things isn't the worst, particularly with their new Synaptic Link. If you are outside of Synapse though, you will get a minus 1 to hit, or a minus 2 to charge any of the non-closest enemy units. The minus 1 to hit thing is pretty significant if you do find your damage dealers out of support range. The Shadow in the Warp is kind of a nice benefit though, Next to the Synapse creatures, your minus one to cast within 18 inches. Certainly with armies like Grey Knights and Thousand Sons running around, that really doesn't hurt to have, and can make their powers a bit easier to deny as well. Finally, all the Tyranids have their Hive Fleet adaptations. Raw power-wise, unfortunately there just really isn't all that much in it. For the most part, I think that Leviathan is just the all-round strongest right now. The 6 plus Feel No Pain is a pretty handy durability buff, but it's more the Warlord traits, the Swarm Commander one for re-rolling hits, the first turn redeployment stratagem, which is great for out deploying the enemy, and a couple of really nice stratagems, including an automatic death throws one, or an exploding sixes to hit one, that gives you another way of amping up damage yet more. After that, probably my second favourite is Kronos, the reroll ones to hit for shooty nids, and their psychic power and stratagem are both useful too. Kraken can do some of the fastest gene stealers about, if that's what you're going for, and Jormungandr I still think is a fairly interesting one, what with their deep strike tricks and a bit of extra defence from cover. You can make a couple of interesting combos from the custom hive fleets, such as the adaptive prey sites and regeneration combo that works quite well with monster themed lists, but I think there's quite a lot of bad traits in that list as well, and Gorgon, Behemoth and Hydra just, just currently don't really seem in any way worth it compared with the stronger ones. Currently, just for the sheer amount of options that they have over the rest, I think it's going to be quite rare that we don't see people running Leviathan. Moving on, let's talk about some of the strongest rules from various sections of the Codex. First up, the Tyranid Psychic Phase is quite a nice one. Having access to Catalyst, the 5 plus Feel No Pain power, is a very easy one to include. Extra defense on the unit that most needs it is a bit of a no-brainer. Onslaught can be a nice one for advancing and charging or advancing and shooting, though it does come with a bit of a risk of being denied if you choose to advance. 
Paroxysm is a fight last one, always handy if you're trying to win the combat phase, put that down on an enemy unit and they won't be able to interrupt, and as I briefly mentioned a second ago, the Kronos Power Symbio Storm is a pretty nice little shooting buff, giving you exploding sixes to hit. Very nice to layer on with their innate buff, potentially on a unit shooting twice. I don't think that the book warlord traits are really all that much to write home about. Perhaps my favourite three are Alien Cunning to redeploy the warlord, plus six inches synapse range to just be an anchor in the middle of the army and make sure that that niche is covered, and Adaptive Biology, the one that makes you minus one damage, but it is a bit unfortunate that this only happens after you've been wounded. It'd be so much nicer if you just got that straight from the start. For raw power wise, they just don't compete with the ones from High Fleet Leviathan. One of them is a full Chapter Master rerolls one, a massive damage increase to the unit that needs it the most, and one to redeploy two different units and make sure that they're either safe from first turn enemy fire or get them in the perfect position to strike. In general, though, I think that the Tyranid stratagems are fairly powerful. I think the Tyranids find it easier than quite a lot of other armies just to convert command points straight into more direct damage. And perhaps the best example of that is the 2 command point 1 for Tyranid infantry to shoot again at the end of their shooting phase. This one just gives you ridiculous damage output on one key unit. Perhaps the two most interesting choices for this are either Hive Guard with those scary Impaler cannons that we'll get onto, or potentially a Termagant Swarm with a crazy amount of Devourers. As you can get 30 of those in a squad, 2 CP can mean an extra 90 strength 4 shots going down range. Often that's going to be well worth it, and this one's totally worth building around to make sure that you get the most value out of those command points. Otherwise, a few of the non-datasheet specific ones that I think are quite interesting. There's Feeder Tendrils, which is an auto-use if you ever kill a character with Gene Stealers, Lictors, or a couple of other datasheets, as it basically gives you a chance to get a few more CP. Metabolic Overdrive is a pretty nice one in ninth when movement is really important for getting to objectives. One command point to double move at the chance of taking a few mortal wounds could well be worth it. If all that matters is that your unit gets into a place to hold an objective, or manages to keep themselves safe from the enemy. For one command point, overrun can also be interesting to gain more mobility as well. Extra consolidation movement could be good enough to get you on an objective. There's a couple of interesting ones for Tyranid monsters. 2 CP for pathogenic slime could be good on certain shooting attacks. Say for example, Exocrines firing against 3 wound infantry, or any number of the big 412 bogs with a big gun. And one command point can give you potentially quite a lot of extra damage when a monster fights, just re-rolling all wound rolls against the enemy. Finally, I think as a general purpose support one, one command point pheromone trail could allow lictors to have an infantry unit deep strike along with them. That could be a nice way of getting certain units into battle. Moving on to a couple of their supplemental rules. Adaptive physiology is the one that came out in the Blood of Baal book originally. This is one command point to upgrade units with certain buffs spent before the game. Perhaps particularly interesting are the 5 plus invul save that you can give to certain monsters. That one could be an interesting one on things like scythed hyra jewels for example. It definitely makes them a lot tougher to chew through with the enemy's guns. Otherwise dynamic camouflage or enhanced resistance could both be interesting for big blobs of things like hive guard or even tyranid warriors. And murderous size could be pretty interesting for a combat monster's weapons. Certainly has the potential to make monsters a lot nastier at cracking enemy tanks. Next we have the synaptic links, the ones where the Tyranids can broadcast their buffs through the synapse web around the table. These came in the Octarius supplement, mostly cost 15 points each, and the vast majority are really quite tempting and interesting upgrades. Probably the biggest and easiest win are the Tyranid Warriors one, where they can just broadcast plus one to hit at whatever they want. It means for a 66 point squad of warriors, you can get a few durable obsec bodies, a source of synapse, and an excellent buff to a nearby friendly unit. Both the Maliceptor and the Turvigons can increase shooting in their own interesting ways. Broodlords can make things significantly harder to shoot down by giving out cover. And the Zone Throat Born can make your psychic phase a little bit more reliable, allowing an extra d6 on the cast. Maybe the other one that I should have included in this list is the Tyranid Prime one. Unchecked Ferocity allows hit rolls of 6 to automatically wound a unit. That's a pretty excellent one for throwing on a Gene Stealer blob as they throw out a ton of attacks. You're going to get quite a lot of auto wounds with that. I would say that these are absolute auto-include levels of good, particularly the warrior one is very nice. I think most Tyranid lists will be taking at least two of these, if not more. Finally, for the various other additional rules in the Codex, we have the Relics. I do feel that it's a bit of an underwhelming section for the Tyranid Codex, perhaps with the sole exception of the Resonance Barb, which gives you plus one to cast, and also allows you to cast plus one power. That one just seems so much further ahead than most of the rest in terms of utility, 
I don't think it's going to be rare to see anyone taking anything else. I guess the Norn Crown could make one critter into a really good counter for instinctive behaviour. There's a few boosted damage dealer weapons that could be fun on Hive Tyrants. And again, as always, Leviathan have a few interesting options on their own. The adaptive neural lobe for command point farming seems like a good one if you're running Leviathan, as is the one that makes you minus one to wound on the bearer. Seems like a pretty excellent way of making a hive tyrant much more survivable, particularly against small arms. Next up, let's talk through the data sheets, moving fairly quickly. If you want to touch more detail, I have made a tier ranking video for the Tyranid units. Feel free to give that a search if you'd like. While I do feel there's quite a lot of underwhelming data sheets in the codex, at least the troop section does seem to have every single one of its five slots usable to some degree, and it's certainly one of the strongest sections in the codex. Rip is an excellent cheap screening chaff. For a tiny investment, they're tougher than you expect, and free deep strike is great. Just an annoying unit to play against to have a bit of pop-up obsec and screening. Gene Stealers are perhaps one of the Tyranids' best damage dealers and best places to stack combat buffs on. They're certainly charged at a bit more of a premium and can get shot down fairly easily once exposed but you can certainly layer them with a synaptic link ability and some leviathan buffs. Maybe make them double move with the swarm lord and just slingshot them all the way towards the enemy. They can very easily cross to the enemy's deployment zone in a single turn. Again, a very competitive unit. Tyranid warriors are reasonably efficient when you just keep them at their base loadout, I think. A bit of extra synapse doesn't hurt, and particularly that synaptic link is absolutely great. For that alone, a small unit or two is a really nice include and you can potentially make bigger stacked squads and layer them with buffs as another source of damage. Termigants can either be nice cheap grunts with a whole load of bodies for obsec, or you can fill them in their devourer loadout and make them into a really powerful deep strike double shooting blob. 210 points of unit theoretically pumping out 180 shots with the right investment certainly seems pretty cool to me. Finally we have Hormigaunts, slightly premium and more melee focused termigants, basically similar to the obsec chaff roll, except they move a bit faster, have some melee damage, and they can also use their bounding leap to jump in a bit closer. I really like the troop slot for the Tyranids, and I think most good lists will combine at least three of these types of troops, and maybe more. Otherwise, going into the Elite section, and we have Hive Guard. These were already perhaps one of the best units in the book, and the Leviathan and Synaptic Link changes have just taken them to the next level, with yet more stacked damage. They're probably the best ignored line of sight shooting unit in the entire game right now, and perhaps can be very tempting just to spam multiple units of them. If you can hide them out of line of sight and just shoot for a few turns, a lot of the enemy army is going to be in pieces, and there's very little that they can do about it if they can't get through your other forces to reach them. Certainly one of, if not the strongest unit in the Codex. I wouldn't be too surprised if they get a small points adjustment next time there's a balance pass. Otherwise, in the Elite slot we have Lictors, which are really quite a useful utility unit, popping up to do actions and pheromone trail in other units. If and when those secondary changes go through that I talked about the other day though, they could go down in utility a little bit. Tyrant Guard can be used to protect Hive Tyrants from shooting, though they are a touch on the pricey side in my opinion, and not played so often. Venanthropes can give out nearby minus one to hit. If you can keep the units safe and keep relevant units in range, they could be an okay choice for the centre of the army. Zonethropes can be one way of using psychic powers and dealing out mortal wounds. Their synaptic link ability is quite good, and they can be quite annoying to shift with their 3 plus invuls. In general though, it does seem that Tyranid players tend to prefer using their psychic powers on big bugs and neurothropes. Neurothropes can't be shot directly, so you keep the powers a bit more reliably safe, and often for the nests that are wanting to run the Swarm Lord, he can also deal with a couple of psychic casts himself too. Finally, for the elite infantry units, Pyrovores are kind of okay grunts for cheap actions, they're certainly very inexpensive for one of them, and can do a little bit of anti-infantry fire as well. I wouldn't really be using them for direct damage dealers though. Finally, from the other slots, we have Spore Mines and Mucolids, who don't really do all that much damage even if they do get in range to deal it. Okay for screening, but Tyranids have a ton of units that can do that well. Gargoyles are cheap fast movers, maybe could be interesting if you need a unit a little bit faster than Hormigaunts. I guess potentially could also be interesting for dropping in and doing actions and things perhaps. Raveners are deep striking and slightly faster Tyranid warriors, okay but not standout in my opinion, and Biovores are some fun ignores line of sight firepower, throw out a couple of mortal wounds and the occasional spore mine, but they do look like a bit of a joke compared with the damage output of Hiveguard. I think for the most part if you are taking them compared with Impaler Cannon Hiveguard, you're probably just taking it to be a bit more fun, fluffy and less spammy. Moving on we come to the many and varied Tyranid monsters, they will do the character ones in the next section. 
Unfortunately, Nids in the list, just spamming loads of monsters at the enemy, doesn't seem to work quite as well as it might have done in ages past, but a couple of the big bugs still are really quite strong. Carnifexes, I think, really need a bit of a points decrease. Their data sheet's incredibly flexible, particularly given the more unique variants like the Screamer Killer, but generally just don't quite have the damage and durability to live up to 9th edition at the moment, and all of the incredibly lethal guns that can be pointed their way. I would say that the Exocrines may be one of the strongest monster units from the core codex, Fairly solid ranged firepower will be pretty efficient against Toughness 7 vehicles or Elite Infantry. The new ruling on their stratagem as well allows you to move and double shoot with it, or even fall back and double shoot. Morlocks and Trigons are kind of okay distraction units. Morlocks could just set up right next to the opponent and force you to have to deal with a big monster in their lines, but unfortunately with their current durability they still have the risk that they might just die. They could be quite nice for deploying large squads of infantry though, maybe things like those Termagants with the Devourers. Toxicrins are okay anti-infantry, perhaps a bit better than standard Carnifexes for that role. Tyrannifexes generally are outcompeted by things like Exocrins for the cost for the firepower. At least they're fairly hefty bugs to take out, but hitting on fours really isn't too helpful, and they don't seem to be quite getting across the damage and durability line for most players, it seems. The Maliceptor might be a bit of a rising star within the Nid Codex right now. 170 points for a reliable Psyker. Perhaps particularly interesting because it is quite hard to take out with its 4 plus invul save. Its synaptic link is quite a good one, give you a nice little damage boost, and it's got a quite fun stratagem for 2 CP to give a lot of your nid units a bit of defence. Enemy weapons must subtract 1 from their strength characteristic when you're targeting your nearby tyranids. The Harrispex, perhaps much like the Toxicrin, is okay versus infantry, though a little bit pricey and only hits on force. Perhaps it's just going to struggle to be general purpose enough to be a frontline melee monster. The Tyrannicide is another premium deep strike delivery option. I think this would genuinely be interesting if it had a first turn strike rule, like the Space Marine drop pods, but until then I think it still remains a bit niche with all the ways to deep strike Tyranid units, and the Spore Assist just seems very pricey for what it does, but I guess it could potentially be quite fun trying to block enemy movement with screens of Spore Mines. Overall, from the non-character Codex monsters, I'd say the Maliceptor and the Exocrine are perhaps my favourite right now, a lot of the others aren't truly terrible, but just seem a bit mediocre. Until recently with the Octarius book, quite a lot of Tyranid lists have been building around these Forge World monsters. The Dimacaron seems a really nice all-rounder in the fast attack slots, very quick movement and leaping over terrain, a 5 plus invul and the chance to acquire a 5 plus feel no pain when they kill something, and really solid melee attacks with D3 plus 3 damage. He did go up a fair few points in the previous chapter approved, meaning he isn't really quite as standout as he used to be but still I think remains solid enough for the cost. Similarly, for big tough monsters, I think both the Barbed and the Sad Hyra Jewels are quite nice. Depends on whether you want the durability and general purpose shooting, or a nice flamer attack that's quite good for clearing out the midfield of infantry units. Both of those seem okay to throw into the battle line. And of course the Mighty Haridan, the enormous 700 point Tyranid Flyer model, and perhaps the ultimate recipient of Tyranid buffs and psychic powers. You can give it a 5 plus invul save, Feel no pain from Catalyst, throw it towards the opponent, and unleash those bio cannons with pathogenic slime. It's certainly going to kill a few things, probably won't get taken down without some excessive focused firepower, but the question is more whether or not it's going to stop you from winning the mission, because you just don't have that many bodies on the board. Still though, a very intimidating model to be facing against if properly supported. Finally, we have the Tyranid characters. Generally quite a lot of usable options in these, though some do seem to be a little bit pricey or niche. Old One-Eye is perhaps an okay character protected unit, you can't shoot him until he gets close, and he is quite fighty when he gets into combat, though he does cost a lot of points. The Red Terror and Death Leaper just really aren't all that efficient data sheets, and the Turvicon I kind of want to like because of the awesome synaptic link ability for re-rolling 1s and 2s to wound rolls. It does bring a psychic power as well, but it does kind of force you to try and build around its gaunt respawning ability, otherwise it does make you feel like you're wasting quite a bit of the data sheet. Otherwise, perhaps slightly stronger options are the Swarm Lord, mainly because of his ridiculously scary double move ability, which can get almost any Tyranid threat exactly where it needs to be, and there's a good reason why Tyranids get quite so easy first turn charges. He also brings psychic powers, is at least somewhat tough to take out with an Imbul, and his melee really is quite decent, but his main weakness is that usually you can directly target him, which means a little bit of focus fire from the opponent can have some really good effects, and take out one of your key buffing pieces. Otherwise, Neurothropes seem a reasonable choice for just efficient psychic powers on the board, while being screened from the enemy. Tyranid Primes seem to be used a lot more these days, now their synaptic link ability is good. They're a cheap way to fill out an HQ slot, 
and that auto wounding on sixes to hit is absolutely amazing on gene stealers. Brood Lords are maybe a good generalist HQ with a little bit of sidekick, pretty scary melee, and a nice synaptic link for putting bugs in cover. And I think the Hive Tyrant is okay, but maybe hovering a bit more in the mid tier. He's an okay all rounder, fast, dangerous, and psychic powers, but I think a lot of people do generally tend to prefer to leave him at home compared with the Swarm Lord. The Swarm Lord's not really all that many points more, and getting that double move ability really does win out in my mind. Still, though, some very decent options in the HQ section, particularly once you've taken into account synaptic links, and expect most of the best armies to run the Swarm Lord maybe backed up by one or two of the other smaller HQs. So finally, I thought we'd just finish up with a couple of Tyranid lists, which I have mentioned before on the channel, but I think are quite a good example of how Tyranids put everything together and create a seriously scary force on the table. This first one is Manny Chima's list, the runner-up at Games Workshop's Austin Open tournament, and it's basically a well-supported list of Hiveguard spam. The bulk of the force is Leviathan. We've got a Tyranid Prime here, bearing both of the decent Leviathan Warlord traits, he can do that with an extra stratagem, so he's essentially a chapter master for rerolls, has strategic adaptation for redeploying units, farms command points on a 5 plus with that adaptive neuro lobe, and has that unchecked ferocity link ability, the one for auto wounding on sixes. Basically, he just wants to stay safe and hand out all those buffs to the units that need them most. We then do have the Swarm Lord as well with Catalyst and Onslaught. He can double move the most important bogs around the table. I imagine the Gene Stealers will be good users of that. That you could use it on himself or some of the other units if you desperately needed range on something key. There's two units of 12 gene stealers, three of them taking acid moors for a bit of extra AP. Great units to be powered up by the Prime and Swarm Lord, and can make good use of some of the Leviathan stratagems. There's then a huge blob of 27 termagants with devourers, a huge amount of strength 4 hits to help clear out chaff, 10 termagants with flesh borers, good for screening actions or objectives, and a unit of 5 hive guards with the impaler cannons. I'm sure they'll be making good use of the full re-rolls to hit from the Prime. Then we have a High Fleet Kronos Patrol, the one with the re-roll ones to hit if stationary. That's led by a Neurothrope with Symbiostorm, the one that allows you to get exploding sixes to hit, and he's there to buff a couple of Hive Guard units, who are also supported by two units of three Warriors, each of which get the plus one to hit with Bioweapon Bond. This all adds up to essentially four units of mega buffed Hive Guard firepower, he should be able to get 4 units firepower out of them with a 2 CP to shoot twice each turn. That could easily ruin 4 enemy units in a single round of shooting, never mind what the rest of the army can do. Finally, and a detachment that might change in the near future, is a Gene Stealer Cult Patrol. This one's mainly there just to get Mass Hypnosis, the seriously good debuff spell that makes enemy units fight last among other things. Really handy for winning any sort of combat games, maybe with those Gene Stealers messing around. He's just there alongside one unit of 5 Acolyte Hybrids, which could be used for snagging objectives or doing actions. Overall, it's a seriously scary and threatening list. You need to be able to reach the Hive Guard early, otherwise you're not going to have too much of an army left. But you're also highly at risk of first turn charges, and there's plenty of decent screening units to keep you back. Look, here's a more balanced list. Here's Tyler Hepler's list that took first at the Ostillo Onslaught Grand Tournaments, and this one's a bit more of a balanced one, built around Hive Fleet Leviathan. In this one, there's the very similar tag team of that buffed up Prime and Swarm Lord. Slightly more Gene Stealers included, as units of 16 rather than 12. A similar big blob of Termagants with Devourers. 10 Hormagants this time to be jumping forward and taking the fight to the enemy. And interestingly, a slightly bigger blob of Tyranid Warriors. 5 of them with 2 Lash Whips and Bone Swords, Adrenal Glands and Bioweapon Bond. Quite cool to see them being used as both damage dealers and a buffing unit. There's just the one unit of Hive Guard in this one. Six of them with Impalers, and they do take the Enhanced Resistance trait, a better resistance to AP-1 or 2. There's a Malaceptor packing Catalyst, and the Focal Essence buffing ability to make one unit more threatening, a unit of three Venomthropes for minus one to hit, and two small units of Sky Slasher Swarms, little flying Forge World Rippers. They're reasonably durable for the cost, and they are quite fast. Finally, there's a very similar Gene Stealer Cult Patrol, with a similar Magus with Mass Hypnosis and Mind Control and this time two small units for Acolyte Hybrids, both of which are packing four Hand Flamers, could be good for doing objectives, or even just clear out some enemy chaff infantry in a pinch. Overall, it is kind of interesting just how many similar things there are in the list, but this one has quite a lot more different and varied threats, that Maliceptor's an interesting choice, as are the Venomthropes, and a potentially quite scary unit of Tyranid Warriors if the enemy does get too close to them. Could be an interesting one to try out if you're not just wanting to spam loads of Hive Guard and make it rain Impaler Cannons.
So I think that just about brings us to the end of our summary of Codex Tyranids today. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Any tips from Seasoned Tyranid Generals are appreciated. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k content coming, with new videos out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Making all the videos like this does take a fair amount of time and effort, and if you are enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good, or you'd just like to help support, then feel free to check out the link in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.